Peter Schiff. Nobody seems to be identified more with an outlook for gold than Peter. Thanks for taking the time, Pete. Oh, anytime, Rick. All right, gold. Uh, I like all the things that you write about gold. Here's what I see, okay? Uh, we had obviously a big sell-off. You're going to tell me why you think that occurred. That pushed us to levels we haven't seen since Brexit, June 23rd, on a closing basis. But as that chart shows you're probably looking at, it had a big jump on the 23rd, especially when the results came out. Sew it all together for us, Peter. Well, you know, I think we hit some sell stocks below 1,300. People are a little uneasy ahead of uh, the jobs report on Friday. I know you had somebody from the Fed uh, start talking about rate hikes again. And look, the market still takes all this talk seriously for some reason. They haven't figured out the, ga the Fed's game plan. I laid it out over a year ago. It's all about talking about raising rates but not actually doing it. And the reality is, even if they do raise rates again, it's going to be just as bullish for gold as the last rate hike back in December was. You know, in a couple weeks, we're going to be getting jolts. And every time we get jolts, I look at the number. Our last look in July was 5,871,000, the highest street ever for this series. And, and I try to send out to all my sources, what do you think? And you always get back to me the quickest. And what do you say when you do, Peter? Well, you, you have to throw all the jolts numbers out the window because thanks to Obamacare, you have employers trying to hire part-time workers. And when you're trying to have a part-time workforce, you automatically need a lot more jobs. And jolts does not differentiate between full-time jobs and part-time jobs. You know, look at the ADP numbers that came out again today. We lost more manufacturing jobs. We replaced them with service sector jobs. These are higher-paying full-time jobs that we destroy, and we replace them with part-time, lower-paying service sector jobs. So a guy who had a good full-time job before Obama was elected, now he's hobbled together three lousy part-time jobs, and the president takes credit for creating two jobs. Now, when it comes to my final topic today, I'm looking at interest rates, and I can make three or four cases as to why they're going up. I think it's market logistics. Everybody has a lot of positions in the 150s. We're now in the 170s. But there's also the notion that we have run our course with this faux game of propping anvils up with monetary policy and central planning. Your final thoughts? Well, I think the Fed is going to do everything it can to keep interest rates artificially low. It has to start by pretending that they can raise them, but their real game plan is to cut them again. But eventually the bond market is going to blow up and the Fed is going to lose control of the long end because pretty soon the bond market is going to figure out that weak economic news is bad for bonds because it means more money printing, more inflation, and that is the real enemy of a, the bond market is the basement of the currency. It's a loss of purchasing power, and that bond bubble is going to burst, but I think the dollar bubble is going to burst first and then take the bond bubble down with it. Peter, always interesting to get your thoughts, sir. Thank you for being our guest this Wednesday. Sarah, back to you.